Recently, you guys have really enjoyed my videos which have taken a look back at past draft classes. Mostly I've been doing it for quarterbacks, but last week I did a video on the Cleveland Browns 2017 draft class, and I got a ton of comments telling me to do a video on the Saints 2017 draft class. While New Orleans only had 7 picks, they had arguably the best draft of the entirety of 2017, and some of the players came out of absolute nowhere. In today's video, we're going to examine the Saints 2017 draft class, go through all 7 of their selections, and talk about where they are now. But before we get started, if you're a big fan of football, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you want to support today's video, and let me know what player, draft class, team, topic, or situation I could cover next. Now let's get started and do a look back at the Saints 2017 draft class. Shockingly, the Saints only had one pick in the 4th through 7th round, but they ended up getting a guy who had a lot of talent. His name was al Qadim Muhammad. Coming out of high school, Muhammad was projected to be a big time NFL draft prospect, as coming out of Don Bosco, he was the number 5 strong side defensive end, a top 50 recruit, and the number 1 player in the state of New Jersey. Muhammad had offers from every school in the country, but eventually would decide to go to Miami. He ended up making an immediate impact, as as a freshman there he would play in 5 games, making 6 tackles and 2 sacks. Sadly though, he would get into some trouble, as he would eventually get a season-long suspension as he got into an altercation with a roommate after the Miami Spring game. He would miss the entire 2014 season because of that, but in 2015 he would bounce back. He'd end up playing in 12 games for the Canes, finishing with 54 tackles, 8.5 tackles for loss, and 5 sacks. Sadly though, his legal troubles would not be done yet, as he was both later suspended and dismissed as he apparently violated rules that had to do with some sort of luxury rental car scandal. This guy honestly may actually deserve a video at some point, but despite all the red flags, Muhammad had so much potential that the Saints decided to give him a chance in 2017. They took him in the 6th round with the 196th overall pick, but unfortunately he ended up getting waived. After that, he was picked up by the Indianapolis Colts, and this was his most successful stint of his NFL career. Sadly, the legal troubles would follow him as he was ejected from Thursday Night Football against the Titans, and then later on this past summer with the Colts, he was suspended for six games for violating the NFL's policy on performance-enhancing drugs. Sadly, Muhammad had all the talent in the world, but could just not keep his nose out of trouble. We now have to zoom all the way up to the third round, as the next pick in the Saints draft class was Trey Hendrickson, a linebacker from Florida Atlantic. As we all know, he has now become a pro bowler, but at the time, he was not getting that much hype. To say he was getting any sort of hype would be an overstatement. Coming out of Florida, he was listed as a two-star recruit, and he wasn't even ranked inside the top 2,000 players in the class of 2013. His only offers came from FAU, New Mexico, and Western Kentucky, and Hendrickson decided to go to FAU. He ended up having an illustrious career for the Owls, as he played there from 2013 to 2016, and was good enough that he was supposed to be a third-round pick. He ended up getting taken with the 103rd selection, and he would become an absolute steal for the Saints. Except, they wouldn't get to see a whole lot of it. He would play in 17 games in 2017 and 18 combined, and wouldn't make his first start until 2019. He'd end up starting 3 games, finishing with a total of 19 tackles and 4.5 and sacks. He'd enjoy his breakout season in 2020, as he started every single game and had 13.5 sacks for them. From there, he ended up going over to Cincinnati, where he has been a dominant force the past 3 years. In the last 3 seasons, he has nearly 40 sacks, seemingly nearly 100 tackles, and has been a pro bowler each of the last 3 seasons. Hendrickson has been an absolute steal, and he seemingly will be a dominant player for years to come, and the Bengals absolutely stole him from the Saints. The next guy we need to talk about is Alex Anzalone. Interestingly enough though, he honestly may deserve a video at some point. Coming out of Pennsylvania, Anzalone was a 5-star recruit, the number 4 linebacker, and the 32nd best player in his recruiting class. He decided to sign with Florida, and immediately had a ton of hype when he got there. He'd end up playing from 2013 to 2016, and Anzalone lived up to all the hype he had. When it came time to go to the NFL, Anzalone was projected to be a third round pick. That is exactly what would end up happening, as the Saints would take him in the third round with the 76th overall pick. As a rookie, he'd end up earning the starting outside linebacker job, but then unfortunately in early October, he was placed on IR. From there, he'd play in all 16 games in 2018, before unfortunately he would suffer another injury in 2019. After that was over, he decided to sign with the Lions, and he would enter 2021 as a starting linebacker for them. He ended up starting the first 14 games of their season, before he would suffer a third injury in Week 15. In March of 2022, he would re-sign with them, and in this past season, he was selected as a Pro Bowl alternate. In total, he has 455 tackles, with 9.5 sacks, 3 interceptions, and 22 pass deflections. Anzalone has definitely lived up to the hype, but just like Hendrickson, the Saints let him get away. The next guy we need to talk about is probably the most notable on the list, and was probably the steal of the 2017 NFL Draft in Alvin Kamara. Coming out of Georgia, Kamara was a huge deal. 
He was arguably the top running back in his class and was actually ranked the number one all-purpose back in the country. He decided to commit to Alabama, and he was expected to be the next big star for the Crimson Tide. Unfortunately, he really wouldn't make it work, as he dealt with an injury, was stuck behind a group of loaded players, and also had behavioral issues. That would lead him to transfer to Hutchinson Community College in 2014, where he would absolutely go berserk there. He then became a five-star transfer, and then would commit to Tennessee. He'd play alongside both Jalen Hurd and Josh Dobbs, and had a brilliant two seasons for Tennessee. Unfortunately, he was underutilized while he was there, but that didn't stop teams from wanting to draft him. In 2017, he was seen as a day two selection, and a guy who could both run and catch the ball. That is exactly what would end up happening, as right away, he was insane for the Saints. He ended up finishing with 700 yards and eight touchdowns, and also had nearly 1,000 yards and five scores in the receiving game. From there, Kamara would start a career-high 13 games in 2018, and really has continued to be brilliant ever since then. Has been to the Pro Bowl five times, and he also tied the NFL record for rushing touchdowns in a game. While he has had a little bit of legal issues, for the most part, Kamara has kept his nose clean, and in total, he's ran for nearly 6,000 yards at 54 touchdowns and caught over 500 passes for 4,000 yards and 23 touchdowns. Kamara is a do-it-all player and was literally the steal of the 2017 NFL Draft. The only guy who was selected in the second round for the New Orleans Saints was safety Marcus Williams from Utah. Coming out of high school, Williams was actually a wide receiver prospect as he came from LA and was a three-star recruit and the number 173 receiver in the entire country. He would eventually commit to Utah over both Washington and Cal, and as a true freshman, he'd play in all 13 games, making six starts. He'd obviously move to the defensive side of the ball as a safety, and then in 2014, he had 59 tackles and an interception. After that, in 2015, he was named a first-team All-Pac-12 selection, and then as a junior, he did terrific, but did end up battling an injury issue. He'd enter the 2017 NFL Draft as one of the top safeties in the country, and was projected to be a late first or early second round pick. That would pretty much end up happening, as he was taken with the 42nd overall pick in the 2017 Draft, and was the number 6 safety off the board. Williams would have an immediate impact for the Saints, as he would start all 15 games as a rookie in 2017, finishing with 59 tackles and 4 interceptions. Ever since then, Williams has been absolutely insane. He has started every single game he has played, and over the course of 7 years, he started 96 games, has had 427 tackles, 53 pass deflections, and 20 interceptions. He's also recovered 3 fumbles, and Marcus Williams has 100% hit on all the hype. While he may not be a pro bowler, Williams has been tremendous, and has definitely lived up to all the hype he had. The next guy has a pretty crazy story, and that is Ryan Ramchak. These videos are absolutely fascinating to me, as I didn't even know how crazy of a story this guy had. Coming from Wisconsin, he ended up becoming a first-team All-State selection, and then would enroll at a Division II school by the name of Winona State. After that, he'd go to Madison Area Technical College, then Mid-State Technical College, and then he would transfer to Wisconsin Stevens Point. That was already four different schools, but then he would eventually transfer to Wisconsin. He immediately became a tremendous center for the Badgers, and they're a team that is known for developing linemen, so when he was taken with the 32nd overall pick in the first round by the Saints, everyone knew he was going to live up to the hype. So far, as of 2023, he has played in 101 games and has started every single one of them. He was a first-team All-Pro in 2019, a second-team All-Pro in 2018 and 2020, and has been featured in the top 100 NFL players multiple times now. Ramchak has 1,000% lived up to the hype, and the Saints got everything they could have ever asked for in an offensive lineman in the first round. And last but not least, the last player the Saints drafted was Marshawn Lattimore. Coming out of Glenville High School in Cleveland, Lattimore ended up becoming a huge recruit as he was a top 6 corner, a top 50 recruit, and a 4-star player in his class. He decided to go over to Ohio State, where he would make an impact pretty quickly. He'd end up redshirting in 2014, but then would get plenty of opportunities to play in 2015 before his hamstring would give him issues. After that, he would fully recover and became a full-time starter for Ohio State and had an incredible season. He became a first-team All-Big Ten selection, and based on both his production and his potential, he was considered one of the top players in the 2017 draft overall. That's why he was taken with the 11th overall pick, and the Saints have gotten tremendous value from him. So far, just like a couple of other players on the list, Lattimore has played in 90 games and has started each and every one of them. He has had a few injury issues, but most of it has not been too severe, and in total, he's been pretty crazy. He's been a four-time Pro Bowler, was the NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year in 2017, and so far has 375 tackles, 86 pass deflections, 15 interceptions, and 5 forced fumbles. Lattimore has 1,000% lived up to the hype, and pretty much every player on this list has. When people told me that the Saints 2017 draft class was truly insane, I thought maybe they were exaggerating, but truly it was. They got the steal of the entire draft in Alvin Kamara, 
have had extremely durable players in both Ryan Ramchak and Marcus Williams start for years now, have one of the top corners in the entire NFL in Marshawn Lattimore, and then found two diamonds in the rough in Alex Anzalone and Trey Hendrickson, who then went on to have insane careers on other teams. The only guy they really whiffed on was al Qadim Muhammad, but honestly he had the talent, he just couldn't stay out of trouble. The Saints get an A++ for this draft class, and I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to give it a like, and let me know your favorite team and what draft class or year I should cover next. Before you go, don't forget to also subscribe to the channel if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen, including my feature on the Browns 2017 class. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.